building and rebuilding homes with sustainable green technology. This is Troubleshooting in Paradise. On Tuesday, June 26, 2012, a perfect storm of record heat, low humidity, and 60 mile per hour winds caused the Waldo Canyon forest fire to explode on the Mountain Shadows community of Colorado Springs. 346 homes were lost, others received smoke and water damage. As Mountain Shadows rebuilds, Troubleshooting in Paradise will advise, assist, and document the community's journey towards a more sustainable, green future. Colorado Springs is a great place. It's always going to be strong and hopefully it gets better. Maybe we can be a poster child too for the rest of the country, you know, re rebuild and show them here's how the future is going to look. I was here, I was standing right in the middle of the cul-de-sac watching the smoke and flames come over these mountains right here, uh, watching the race down the hill. There was a big wind event. I heard uh, weather people say it was like 65 mile an hour wind gusts. They just pushed the fire, literally, they were probably moving that fast down the hill. Uh, we all tried to kind of find each other. The first time they let us all back in here, they picked, I think it was a Sunday morning, they let us come back in, go through our houses, fire department, police department, and so we all kind of met, gave each other hugs, got our contact information. I think one of the first questions a lot of us had was, where well, are you going to rebuild? And I'm guessing probably about two thirds of the people said, yeah, it's a good community, we're gonna rebuild. We, uh, we bought the house in 2001, it was built in 1987. My wife always wanted to rebuild anyway, and I hate moving, so in a weird way, we're both gonna get what we want. She can rebuild in the same neighborhood where we had a house before. And it'd be great to be able to have solar, wind power, and be more independent, I guess. And you could totally put panels, you could put anything that can capture the sun in this backyard and capture it all day long, store it in batteries and make a lot less carbon footprint. Are we discussing future solar or are we discussing a whole different automation for the house? Just, well, I just wanted to meet with you as a builder, but they were talking about like maybe, is it like a possibility to introduce solar like in the future? You actually brought up, you said some of the houses you built had some wiring. -wiring. Well, what I'm doing, uh, we're building a house out in Monument right now and uh, we're just running a conduit up into the attic for for future solar that's going to be tied into the the panel with its own circuit in the garage okay so that's what we're doing right now okay. that's just a conduit running off of the power panel its own circuit inside the garage um, and then they'll dedicate that not only in the garage but down in the mechanical room too if any equipment needs to be stored down there as part of the solar system that tie into the furnace hot water heater or, or what you know what what's required there so that's what we're currently doing right now i've never used solar uh, but i know nothing about it that's why right. I, kinda, I, I do mean, I, I buy back a little bit on solar colorado has amendment 37 which was passed in 2004 that was uh passed by a citizen's initiative that requires utilities to have a certain amount of, of renewable energy in their, in their portfolios. That law also required uh, a, um, utilities to uh, have what's called net metering. And 
what net metering is simply is during the day when a lot of folks aren't home and the only thing that's really running is the refrigerator and what's called phantom loads that's the your TV and other equipment that's plugged in that's turned off but still drawing current your solar energy system will put energy back on the grid okay and so your meter is basically spinning backwards during this time period ideally what you want to do is size that system to match your load because they'll buy that energy back from you but they'll buy it back at wholesale solar is a as far as getting the money back well right now here in Colorado Springs you get a dollar eighty a watt rebate from Colorado Springs utilities so essentially the biggest system you can put on a house is ten thousand watts so you would get back uh, about eighteen thousand dollars essentially I mean to get you in the ballpark for putting Over the system what, the in. lifespan of the house or the no system, at the moment what? you at the moment you get it commissioned and turned on within two weeks you get a check right now the cost is uh, the average cost so, in Colorado so Springs is five dollars and eighty cents a kW Okay, so how many KWs are we going to need in a uh, average home? And it, yeah, this home is uh, thirty-five on thirty-six hundred square feet. Yeah, thirty-six hundred okay. square. I, I I would imagine five to to six KWs. Okay, hmm. that's the questions I have. That's, I'm, I'm more curious about cost. My wife is like, because we're already going to be spending a lot more, but is it like worth yeah. it to do it in the future? Uh, well, down the road, if we're, if yeah, we're planning on staying, it, it sounds like it is. But. The cheapest thing you can do for right now is you run a conduit, a steel conduit from uh, the attic. Uh, so you'd almost need to do that ahead of time before you... Yeah, that's yeah, not a big deal. Yeah, it's during not, the rough It's a piece of cake. Two wires are running off the roof. Yeah. Right. Well, they just run a piece of conduit right up yeah. there with a few yeah. wires in it. Yeah, three-quarter inch conduit, nothing in it, really. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. it doesn't have to have anything in it. Yeah, it's, it doesn't go to the electric yeah. panel. It goes to a junction box next to the electric panel. And we can give you a very simple layout yeah. for that. And uh, so then later on down the road, you decide you want to you know, get solar energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you've got a portion of it, you know, the rough-in portion, which saves you some labor. It's always easier to get a conduit in during the rough-in than it is after everything's finished. <laughs>